Not quite as dramatic entrance as I did. Oh, Philip. well, you did wonderful, but there's only one thing I would suggest that really? you do. Yes. When you turn around with your gun. Yeah, well, show me then. Show, okay. we, we can show this. There you we have are. to do this. You have to say, there there's your backing, backing, backing. Yeah. And you say, freeze! <laughs> 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 I stand corrected. <laughs> oh, okay. dear. That's okay. Now then, what's this? You were a man who was originally going to be in the church. In the church. It, it, it's a bit of a oh, difference from a going into the church and going into Miami Vice. Oh, okay. Well, uh, when I was like a teenager, 16, yeah. I was the youth minister of my church. Really? Yeah, and I went to uh, uh, Oakwood College in Huntsville, Alabama, and uh, studied comparative religion and philosophy. But it trained me for the stage. You know what I'm saying? I, my first almost four years of my career, I was doing stage and stuff like which continued to prepare me for what I've been doing for almost 27 years now. <laughs> So it's, it was the development period. So how did you get the part then, the part of Tubbs and Miami Vice? Okay, well, after 16 years of working in stage and film, etc., I was one of um, several lucky people who had a chance to audition for the show. And fortunately, uh, there were the last 10 Tubbs and 10 Crockett's were together, <laughs> and Don Johnson and I read together, and it was a magic thing. It was chemistry, what Michael Mann was looking for, and the rest is history. It certainly yeah. is. Now, I, I've often said to people, you know, when they get that script and such a successful show as Miami Vice, do you look at it and think, yep, we've got a winner here? Did you know right from day one? Oh, yeah. When I read it, I read the, the script first. It was called Gold Coast. It was back when I was in New York in 1983. And my agent had sent the script to me, and I said, this is me. This is me. And, but a funny thing happened because when I auditioned uh, the first time, they told my agent that I wasn't the right type. You know, and you get that a lot as an actor, you're not the right type. I said, no, but that's me, it's my personality and everything. And fortunately, like I say, the rest is history. Well, I mean, it went on to be a success in something like 100 countries. Were you aware of how big it was? Because I interviewed David So once of Starsky and Hutch fame, and he said, you know, for two years he'd been in the, the back lot at Universal in L.A., and he didn't realize how famous he'd become. Were you aware of just how, how big it was? Well, uh, well, we kept getting feedback all the time because we were having so many people come in to do interviews and things like that, and uh, it was incredible because here you are, you're on the cover of Time magazine, Newsweek, all these magazines, it's like, wow, it's incredible. I really didn't get the full f feel until I started traveling, you know, I, like David did, in terms of seeing the way people react to you, because over the years I've been doing a lot of international travel, I mean, to Russia, several places in Europe, South America, Canada, and people just respond to it like we're very much a part of their consciousness. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why it's such an honor to come back here and find out that it's going to be running for the next couple of years. It's, in fact, the show's on tonight at 10.30. That's right, UK Gold. It's going to be on a couple of times a week as well. Yeah. Fridays and Sundays as well. They're going to keep running Sundays, it. Sundays, yes. I'm it's happy. Going to be absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Now, the, the other thing is that it was way ahead of its time, really, because it was the first designer show. Because people talk about Quentin Tarantino, the film director now. But I mean, you were there because you were first with like the designer clothes, the designer mm -hmm. cars. The, the designer music, mm -hmm. the designer violence as well. <laughs> designer violence. I wonder what it, but that's what it was, wasn't it? It was a bit yeah. like that. Well, it had a combination of a lot of things that, you know, uh, I'm just honored to have been a part of, really. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, when you look at it, I mean, I think there was, a, there was a crime count or a kill count, and it was like Don had killed something like 34 in one scene, and you'd killed 14. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I wonder, how did Miami re react to that? Because, of course, everyone thought Miami's the place which is full of drug runners and murderers and. Well, the good thing about it is, see, Miami Vice is a, a piece of living art, mm -hmm. you know, and the thing of it is, is when the people get shot, they get back up, so it's not really real. <laughs> like know? the A-team all over yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever really got killed in there. No. How much input did you have, you know, as far as the, the look, you know, the clothes? Uh, well, I had a lot of, 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 of uh, discussions with the designers and stuff like that, and they loved dressing me because they said, you know, I wear clothes well, and I said, thank you. Yeah, I think yeah. the girls would agree with that, yeah? <laughs> they would. They do. <laughs> That's great. So, yeah. Now, the other thing that I have to ask you, we got all the stories here, and obviously you and Don weren't here, but, I mean, we, we got all the stories. You hated each other. Come on, tell us. Yes. You didn't get on, did you? 
Well, we hated each other all the way to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> no, we never hated each other. We're like Siamese twins. Yeah. Actually, we have a very fond affection for one another. Yeah. You still keep in touch? Yeah. In fact, uh, he's just now uh, producing a new show called Marshall. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's doing very well. Yes. Yeah. Because, what, what, well, now, you're a big fan of the show. Why are you such a fan of the show? Oh, I don't know. I always, I mean, this is like, you know, I'm not worthy, I'm not ah. worthy, so I'm here. It is. I, it was just that show. It had everything for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you actually watch episodes of it now and enjoy it? Mm -hmm. You know, without, without thinking, well, I know what's going to happen next and what have you. I've often wondered if people can watch shows. Can you watch it and enjoy it? I, I watch it, yeah, and enjoy it because uh, a good thing we had, we had uh, a, a wonderful budget. We had over a million dollars per show that we could do, and we had a lot of things. We, we like, ushered the golden age of television into the platinum age, and a lot of the uh, music that happened to come from Europe, et cetera, helped that show to be what it was. I remember we had so many people that wanted to do the show. They would call in and say, I want to be on that show, I want to be on that show. They had to turn people away, yeah. you know? So when I watch it and I see what's happening, it's like we were able to do major motion pictures for television. Yeah. Well, going back to the stories that we were always fed here, and you know things get exaggerated. But what about that? You sleep in a pyramid. Is this right? Uh, yes, that is true. Uh, really, I, it is it's true. true. It's oh, true. It's true. Uh, I happen to own a theater. I own a 438-seat house uh, in Miami. I bought ten years ago called the Mi called the Miami Way Theater. And it, when I was designing, I designed all the rooms with pyramids and stuff like that. I have the King's Chamber, etc. And we have a full-blown 24-track recording studio upstairs. And I find that performing under the pyramid gives you a sense of something that you can't even define. It like balances you out. So it's been a very. Do you sleep upside down? This I think was another. Upside down. down. Yes, no, another thing. That I we... hang from gravity boots on occasion. Yeah, but yeah. You, you don't sleep upside down. No, I don't. Because you see, we were fed down. all these stories. How did you cope with it all? Because it must it just rocketed you to worldwide fame. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's quite incredible. I mean, I. You know, still today, I, I'm, I'm fascinated with the fact that it's happening. I just hope that I can do another uh, 30 or 40 years of the same thing. You know, yeah. since I've been here, I've seen a couple of shows. I saw uh, Mama, I Want to Sing with Shaka Khan, mm -hmm. and I saw Hamlet, and I'm going to see um, Oliver and a couple of other yeah. things. I'm, I'm hungry to get back on stage. In fact, there was a play that I starred in in 71 called No Place to Be Somebody, which I would love to perform in London, or possibly a musical that I may have written or something like that. So there, there very much is life after Miami Vice. Definitely life after Miami Vice. Yeah, so you're looking forward to all. It's wonderful to have you back in the country here again. Looking forward to seeing it in UK Gold as well. Thank the man, you. Philip Michael Thomas. <laughs> <laughs>